is life really better in your 20s or does life get much better in your 30s? Today, I'm going to be talking about life lessons from when I was 24 to being 31. Welcome to today's episode of One Take, your daily book kicking with myself, Connor Anderton, if you don't know who I am. I am a online coach of the last 10 years and I specialize in helping regular guys get insane physique transformations and get incredibly strong in the process. Now, as you saw in the intro, today I wanted to talk about life lessons from the age of around 24 to 31. Seems really specific, okay? But I think it's gonna be really cool. And I only talk about 24 to 31 because it was kind of like the highlight of a lot of stuff that happened within my life that gave me mass perspective on a lot of things that I feel are truly important in life and that a lot of people could could benefit from hearing. Uh, but I truly believe if you listen to this episode, you're going to take a lo- away a lot from it. You might learn a thing or two. You might hear a few gems in there where you go, ooh, yeah, that sounds about right. And if you take away one thing from this entire 10 minutes or whatever it might be, then I'm going to take that as a huge win, okay? And it'll be worth your time. So guys, 24 to 31, why is that so special? Now, being 31 years old in my old age now, nah, still a baby, just a baby with a bald head, which makes sense as well, by the way. Babies have bald heads generally, unless you're a weirdo. But yeah, being 31 now, and being in this next era of my life of, you know, requirements being different, my wants, desires, needs being extremely different to when I was younger, and going into a part of the life where I'm really looking forward to starting a family, you know, being a dad, and coming to all sorts of chaos in the future. That is actually, at this point, not very scary to think about, I'm sure it will be when it happens, but more so being at a point in my life where I'm ready to move forward with that next step, start a family, um, and just move into that next realm of, you know, bringing children up and moving forward as a family rather than more individually. Of course, I'm a married man, so I don't move forward individually. I move forward with Robin in literally every aspect of life. We're a little team. But you, you get what I'm saying. So let's 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 reverse, okay? This is why life is better now. <laughs> Twenty four, the height of my one to one personal training career. Now this podcast guy, they're going to be very open and honest with a lot of stuff because I truly believe if you listen to me, if you're getting this far into episodes, it's because you are interested, and you know you can take something away. What I owe yourself as the listener or a viewer if you're on youtube um is transparency is honesty throughout the entire thing get to know me a little bit and yeah let's go from there 24 height of the one to one pt career doing very well easily putting out what 40 ish one to one pt sessions a week um online on top of that it's a lot of work 40 hours of pt is not 40 hours of work it's a lot more. That's 40 solid hours of in-person time. <laughs> never mind prep for that. Never mind travel. Never mind um, diet updates. Never mind messages and dealing with clients and phone calls outside of that, consultations, marketing, uh, social media, uh, diet plans, training plans, adjustments, all that stuff. So 40 hours is and the rest. 55 hours, 60, easy. Right, on top of that, I was doing online work. Probably, I probably, at that point, I probably had, what, 10, 11 online clients as well, which, you know, was a good amount whilst I was so busy in PT. That took up a lot of work. You know, income is very high at this point. Um, at this point as well, I also had a uh, meal prep business uh, with a business partner. And we actually got that to a point, I think one month we were hitting pretty close to, if not £8,000 turnover per month. We hit some real highs. Don't get me wrong, that was like a bit very up and down. That was our best month. I'm not saying it consistently made that. Um, but yeah, so overall, you know, the the, the businesses were thriving. <clears throat> we're probably turning over between businesses like 
150,000 to a couple hundred grand a year. I was driving around in fast performance cars. This isn't a brag, by the way. This is stupid. <laughs> All this is, is just a part of my life that was a learning process that, you know, some people look at it as like, oh, that was a success. I look at it as a learning curve to realise what I truly wanted and why I know that actually really matters. So, as you can imagine, you're young, you know, you buy your first house, um, you got a good income, driving around your fast cars like an idiot, um, and you're still miserable, absolutely miserable, okay? Because you're so lost in the true requirements of your life. You, you, you're lost in what other people think of you. You think you need a fancy fast car because people will think, oh, he's really successful, when in reality, it doesn't even matter. It could have been driving around in a in a banged up Peugeot 106 from 1997, and the success wouldn't have been any different. I bought my first house. People deemed I was more successful because I did that. Was I fuck? Who gives a fuck if you own your house or not? And that's just not a requirement for life success or happiness. Let's be damn sure about that. I'd be much happier in life without owning a home than I have with owning a home. If someone was to tell me I was wrong about that, you are not me. <laughs> you do not live inside my brain. So what I'm saying is you can have all this stuff and you can look a certain way to the outside world. You can be, you know, flashy cars, good income, big business, big house, all this stuff. And you can still be miserable. Okay. Moving forward after a few years, open up the gym that I had eaten and all the stress that caused, that seemed like the, the next step. That next step was extremely exciting. What we built was incredible. And everyone who was a part of it would know that. Uh, if you saw it, you'd know that it was one of the coolest things on the planet. <laughs> it was really cool. It was really special. Um, of course, we didn't have any fun because we opened it. <laughs> and then COVID hit instantly. So it just we, the, the foot we started on was horrendous. And we couldn't recover from it over a two-year period. And we decided to uh, call it quits. Uh, but what I learned from that was serious resilience. And again, truly what I wanted in life. Personal trainer, gym owner always seem like the natural progression. Looking at it now, should it be the natural progression? No, a lot of PTs will go into wanting to own a gym, when in reality, it's just buying yourself a job because what they will do, they'll just PT in that gym. So instead of paying 500 quid in gym rent, you've now got six grand or seven grand in monthly bills because you own a gym, because you've got, you know, <laughs> business rates and taxes and rent and water and heating if you're doing that and you know uh electric and all this sort of stuff staff i don't know you could keep going um so it's a bit of a crazy process and not a natural progression that anyone should aspire to in my opinion and do not see yourself as less successful than a person who has something like that because again it's not true success is a very personal endeavor you could look at people who got millions of pounds in the bank and they're fucking depressed as shit do you want to be that person who doesn't want to wake up every day but you've got a mill in the bank? Or would you rather have less in the bank and be happy as fuck in a great relationship with great friends, loving your daily life, being healthy? I know what I'd rather have. So this doesn't mean you can't aspire to have things and you know, build your career and earn more money. That's not what this is saying. It says you have to have the realisation that it should not be a requirement for your happiness. Okay? It should not happiness has to come from this internal factor of uh, working on yourself and being proud of what you're doing every day and putting yourself in an environment of where you are thriving and truly happy and supportive and comfortable all these sorts of things so let's fast forward i went from 24 we opened up the gym around 27 <coughs> something like that uh 28 ish and you know we closed it and all this sort of stuff we hit a bit of a downward spiral <laughs> after that <coughs> a lot of financial catastrophe uh, a lot happened um, a lot of turmoil in a, in, in a turmoil uh, probably a good bit of depressive episodes and stuff like that um, a lot of not wanting to be on this planet let's put it that way um, and then we turn it around we turn it around in a way of uh, okay we have to be doing this for me now not for what people think when I was um, building the gym, when I was driving around nice cars, it was all because of what I, I wanted to people think of me, and I was caught up, and I was internally a mess, externally successful, internally depressed and unhappy. Now, 
coming into this later stage of life where, you know, you have to hold a gun to my head to get me to spend money on a fancy car. <laughs> it's just one of the things where I'd rather go, no, I'd rather not finance my ass out of a car to look a certain way to people. I'd rather own a car outright and be safe and comfortable and have more money in the bank. <laughs> Um, and not be tempted to rattle it around at stupid, stupid speeds. I'd rather drive, drive something slower so that I can protect myself and protect my family, right? Um, and what, what I'm talking about in this podcast, guys, it's not like a brag of what we've done. It's not a brag of what we're doing. It's not a feel sorry for me for what I've been through. Feel sorry for me because I've been depressed in the past or whatever. None of that. This is all just a learning curve of that. As you get older, these priorities change. I used to have priorities of cars. I now do not have priorities of cars. I couldn't give two fucks, okay? I used to have priorities of looking a certain way on social media or for people with my business. Now, I run my business logically, loyally, at a very high level, and I absolutely love what I do. The service that I give highly benefits people, and it leaves me a nice life. I get to work from home. I get to be around Robin. I get to be around my dog all day, every day, I get to go out and walk when I want, I get to train when I want, <clears throat> I get to, you know, manage my own diary, I don't answer to anyone, and all these things, and this is a life that I've tried to create in order to move forward to the next chapter of my life that will ultimately be raising a family, no Robin is not pregnant before somebody asks, I'm so snotty, I do apologise, um, but it, it, coming for all this young and craziness has taught me to not be crazy and to settle down and to just enjoy the simple things. Like before, I would have to genuinely buy a new car in order to feel happy and have some dopamine here. Where now, I can literally sit on the couch with my wife, cuddling, watching Great British Bake Off, have the best time. And that is enough. <laughs> or we can go, should we go out for a coffee at lunch? And we'll spend an hour with a coffee and a cake, talking, putting the world to rights, talking about goals, talking about our relationship, talking about little things like that, our hobbies, and just having the best hour of the day. That means so much more than having loads of fancy shit to impress people. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. So 24 to 31, the difference in mentality, the difference in happiness, the difference in desires and all these things have been insanely crazy and it's a path that I, would, I don't regret any of it I'm glad it's come to this I'm glad I've been able to learn through this process I'm glad I'm now the person that I am that is you know really settled down really low key I would say um, I would argue not a lot of people actually know about my life um, like within it you might see what I post on social media from like a clientele point of view and stuff like that but when it comes to truly knowing me, I'm pretty sure people know I'm, I'm relatively reserved. Uh, that does not mean I'm shy or anything like that. But naturally, I'm extremely introverted. Um, again, people would think I'm not because I'm always on camera. And the job that I do where I work with people, um, I'm introverted. But I've got a lot of experience in working with a lot of people. So I'm very, very good at conversation. Uh, that does not mean I am not introverted. <laughs> Put me in these extroverted situations and it kills off my uh my energy i'm gonna go and settle down for a bit but guys this is what you take away from this do not do things for other people do things for you if you feel like you have to be flash for other people maybe really think that through if you're not uh, creating happiness from the little things think that through what are the small things in life that are going to make you happy and push you forward spending a lot of money getting in debt is not going to do that that's going to take me give you a step back it's gonna make you look cool but it's gonna make you have a step back i'll tell you what does look cool having a great body so do not forget that one thing you can work on damn cheap is your body so when it comes to having a fancy car i'm gonna say it i'm gonna get shouted at for this but don't be the fat guy in a nice car be the fit guy in a shit car <laughs> i'll be the fit guy in a great car i don't know whatever but yeah so life lessons guys learn from them Realize that as you get older, a lot of your, you know, mentality will settle down. I'm sure I'm going to feel very different again at 40, settle down even more, learn even more about myself. Uh, family will become even more priority. 
Um, I probably think I'm an idiot even now when I look back. And I had this conversation with my parents not long ago where they're like, you know, turned 60 and they look back and think, Christ, why did I bother about that stuff? When all this is stuff that really matters. When your relationship is the thing that matters the most, work on that. Your friends and family are the things that matter the most, work on that. Do not be in this selfish realm of where only you matter, where you're too busy trying to look a certain way rather than be a happy person. But yeah, I'm rambling on now. I hope this makes sense. I didn't know how this was going to come across. I don't know if it's come across well. If it hasn't, fuck it. It is what it is. I'm the one putting myself out there. Um, if it does come across well and you've resonated with it, please like the video. Maybe leave a comment below to help out the algorithm. And maybe subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Because there's going to be a lot more of this to come. And it's all going very well. So guys, thank you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode.